One of my favourite guitarists, uh, Dwayne. Is? Satanta. I help him. Yeah, that'll do. And uh, he joins us on Carlos Santana. Carlos. Thank you very much, Jared. I didn't quite get the gag. Huh? So Tanner A. Halpin does join us as uh, part of this um, beautiful Wednesday evening sports today. We've got plenty to get to still on the program, but we wanted to get Satana into the studio to have a little in-depth discussion with him. We very rarely do this, but we've done it tonight. Welcome to the program, Satana. Thank you very much, Dwayne. Nice Should to have you. Here. That's a magnificent top you've got on there, Satana. What's, just describe it for us, because I thought I was talking to Matthew Lloyd at one stage. You walked in, a big tall strapping bloke with a red and black uh, top on. No, it's my uh, my colours from back home, so uh, the car colours. So um, Zaki came out. My brother Zaki came out to visit me, so he um, gave me one of his fleeces. So yeah, it's just a reminder of my my home. So um, yeah, I wear it every now and then. How often do you walk down the street with your Carlton fleecy on? No, no not too often. <laughs> Zaki had to go home. Uh, would have been. I'm sure he would have liked to have stayed and been in the same position you're in right now, being one of the kingpins at the Blues. Yeah, obviously, you know, it was uh, disappointing to see him go. You know, he invested four years of, um, you know, of tough times here. So um, it was disappointing to see him go. But um, that sport, you know, just he didn't quite make it. So um, you move on, and he moves on to the next part of his uh, life. So can I ask you, Satanta, what was the turning point? Because I reckon two or three years ago, a lot of questions being asked in Ligon Street over a bowl of spag, whether or not uh, it was worth persevering with you. Yeah, I suppose. Um, when I first came here, you know, as a as a as a tall, um, they told me it was going to take time. Mm -hmm. it took Jim Stein's five years, you know. It's taken me a bit a bit longer than that, and um, you know, hopefully I, I I can I'm starting to see the light, you know, and um, it's just a bit of improvement every year, you know, of the rats and the coaches that have gone before him have helped me bit by bit, and uh, you know, thankfully it's shining through now. Jimmy Stein's was. Um well, he had a bit of a run, and then he went back to Paran. I think Greg Hutchison was coaching him at Paran, and Slug Jordan spent hours and hours and hours teaching him everything there was about footy except running across the line, which cost uh, Melbourne a final. Who's, who have been the unknown, the unknown people that I guess have uh, played a role in your development? Oh, definitely Barry Mitchell. You know, when I first got down to Carlton Football Club, you know, you don't you don't quite play AFL at the start, and mm. um, I was happy to, to be under Barry Mitchell at the time, and you know he's. He, he spent hours and hours with me after training, you know, nights there, you, you'd leave the track, you know, an hour after everyone else and just uh, harnessing the skills, you know, and uh, teaching me the game itself. So um, without a doubt, you know, I wouldn't be here today for guys like him, you know, my teammates along the way have helped me immensely, you know, Kuda, he's been there, you know, players like uh, Corey McGrath, Ian Prendergast, you know, guys that have taken me aside, Simon Wiggins. You know, Brett Thornton. I can mm. name, I can Thanks. name f fifty players. You know that w when I came into the system, were happy to put their hand out and um, help me. And it, you know, it's something I I thank them for. Now you had a garlic footy background, which has got a lot of similarities. Yeah. How do you reckon these guys, Carmichael Hunt and Israel Folau, would go coming from games with very few similarities? Yeah, I suppose um, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a good test for them. You know, I suppose um, once you have that desire and hunger to achieve. I'm sure um, which these guys have, you know, uh, and uh, wanting to do well, you know, it's all about learning the game and uh, taking it to each step at a time. Mm. So um, they've got the physique, you know, to, to play Aussie rules, and um, you know, I wish them all the best. What you learn about last week? First time you've done a major <laughs> newspaper interview. Yeah. And it's the first time you've had a shocker. No. <laughs> yeah, learn never to do any interviews or media ever again. Apart from this, <laughs> apart from this here <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah. No, I've learned when you take a mark in front of goal, don't ever play on. Well, actually, you actually want us to ask you that. What is it about you that uh, consistently wants to play on? I guess I get it from GA, you know, when you do, it there's, no mark, there's, no, yeah, there's no mark in GA, so um, when you get the ball, you just you play yeah, on and it, yeah. everything comes from instinct and you know um, yeah I've, I've got to cut it out. <laughs> Can I just going back to that interview, I mean it was a pretty big interview with Martin Funningham. did it, do you think it affected the way you play because there'll be a lot of people say you shouldn't have gone down media street, there'll be other people that say you're a big, a growing name, you're going to hopefully become a big name and you need to deal with those sorts of things. Did it play on your mind? Did you read it a couple of times? Did you think how how will players see it and all that sort of stuff? Did no, I didn't. I didn't think of it that much. I suppose w when I did it, you know, obviously you've got to. It's part of the game. You've yeah. got to do it, and um, you know. But um, 
I'm I'm firm believer of um you know if, when you do articles that you know you you take it for the better. Yep. And um obviously I don't do many and um I'm kind of shy in that that regard and um I suppose um looking back at it now you know I it did you know I put a question to in my mind and I suppose um in regards of preparation I don't think it hampered me in any, any game mm. I just I just had a, sh a shocker as you <laughs> said <laughs> and um you know it's something I've just got to learn and accept. What do you do off the field, Satana? Because um, I understand you're fairly actively involved in the community. And what have you set up for uh, post footy or outside footy life? Yeah, obviously I'm doing um, the multicultural pro program with uh, youth uh, Kobayashi at the club. So we go around to uh, s schools around the Carlton region, uh, schools mainly with refugee kids, you know, and giving them a taste of um, footy and what mm. footy culture is about. You know, I, 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 even though I was born in Sydney. You know, mm. I, I left here when I was three years old and I went back to Ireland and um, coming out again, you know, I re relocated back to Australia and it's uh, just telling kids of m my story and how, how to integrate into society, into life and uh, life in um, Australia. So you like Carlton's Harry O'Brien? Uh, at a smaller scale, yeah. <laughs> just on your heritage, um, you're half Irish and Fijian descent as well? Yep. Half, I, half Irish and my mum's Fijian. How so. did you get to be born in Sydney and then go to, to Ireland? How did that work? Yeah, my parents, um, my, my dad worked in uh, the uh, oil, oil rigs off Papua New Guinea. Okay. And uh, there he met, uh, my, my, um, he travelled uh, to Fiji on holidays now and yeah. then and there he met my mum in Suva. So they got together and they ended up marrying and um, headed to Australia where um, my mum's sister was there, so my auntie was there and uh, they lived there for 20 years, had five children. Okay. And uh, my dad, you know, didn't get the opportunity to, uh, to speak the Irish culture and the language, so he decided to go back and give his, uh, give his kids the opportunity. So um, shipped up and uh, five of us went home and um, in uh, 88, so and uh, came out. So. Are you an Aussie now? Will you stay here or will you go back to Ireland when it's all done? Oh, when I, when I first got here, I said um, I was always going to go home. Yeah. But, you know, as time, goes, as time went on now, I, I, I've learned to love it here. I've made great friends. You know, I've met a, I've met a beautiful girl. Yep. So that think, helps. It does help, doesn't it? <laughs> so if you follow the script, 2021, you'll be the next president of the Carlton Football Club. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know about that. <laughs> Tell you what, well, Jimmy Steins, is, uh, he has paved the way for you to do it. <laughs> yeah. What when would you do if you were the president? I mean, we've got sticks, we know that, and he's doing a pretty good job. Yep. Sides back up in the uh, upper reaches of the ladder. What would you do if you were the president of the footy club? Carlton Footy Club. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I do. <laughs> I don't really. Well, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a break. We're going to open up the lines on 96900 693 or 13 13 32. You may want to have a chat to uh, the Irish recruit called Satana O'Helpen.